today on Doomed. <laughs> All right, this isn't an official episode of Doomed, but I felt like. This, this intro song just makes me feel like how I feel for this episode of Game of Thrones tonight, everybody. Man. Spoilers. King's Landing is doomed if you haven't watched the episode yet. So let's get right to it. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't planning on doing a stream tonight. But I wasn't planning not to either. It was sort of a let's see how this episode goes. And I'm glad, I'm glad it went the way it did. <laughs> All right, let me pull up the old webcam here on YouTube. Blah, 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 blah. Hello, everybody. Ah, oh, what an episode, right? Am I right? Am I right? What an episode. So let's let's talk about this episode of Game of Thrones. Uh, well, there's already comments filling up the chat, so let's let's get right to it. Actually, uh, MacArthur says I haven't been a huge fan of this season. But this episode was the nail in the coffin for me. Now I'm about to say something again. Uh, this is a spoiler alert. If you are watch, if you have not watched this episode of Game of Thrones yet, and my cat just jumped in a box. If you have not watched this Game of Thrones yet, uh, turn off this live stream now. MacArthur continues. Daenerys going Mad Queen wasn't the right direction. No, no, I have to disagree. I think it's fantastic. Uh, Oxy says Matt was right in 2016. Indeed I was. Let me pull up the tweet that's getting uh, retweeted a bunch now. I had forgotten about Actually, I I had forgotten about it tonight. But I had not forgotten about it. Uh, well, I forgot about it for a very long time. And then a few weeks ago, uh, I got a Google alert. Which, you know, you do. You set up Google alerts for your name if you're... If you write and you want to see what people say about your writing and your podcast and your YouTube stream or whatever, that's something you do. Um, and Vox wrote something about, I, th I think it was just about how like comparing politics to Game of Thrones and they embedded that tweet. And I was like, oh yeah, I did tweet that, didn't I? And then I finished watching the episode. Uh, you know, we put our, uh, our three-year-old to bed. Uh, like we do every Sunday, every night, but, you know, so when it, hey, he goes to bed at 8.30 usually, um, and, you know, we don't get to watch it exactly when everyone else starts watching it when it gets uploaded. So I'm always about anywhere from like 20 to 40 minutes behind where everyone else is. So finish watching the episode, and I open my Twitter to see what people were saying about the episode, and the tweets are already getting retweeted all over the place. Uh, so I said, in 2016, all these comparisons of Hillary to Khaleesi, from Game of Thrones are going to end up being super great when Daenerys ends up just like the Mad King. And you know what? I don't even think it was that like like Nostradamus-esque because the show was dropping hints for a long time. I just think people didn't want to believe it was going to go that way or they didn't, I don't know. It was pretty clear to me that they were dropping hints. Again, because it was Game of Thrones, I wouldn't have bet that they would have went that route. You know, they could have dropped those hints just to make people think she was going to go Mad King and then end up not being Mad King, you know, going that route. But I think this was the way to go. Because this was the happy ending everyone thought they were going to get. Queen Daenerys, blah, 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 blah. Mother of Dragons, blah, 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 blah. Uh, whatever all those titles she's got. I don't even give a shit anymore. <laughs> They thought she was going to be on the throne, man. And it was pretty clear it wasn't going to happen. I mean, her dad was the Mad King. Her brother raised her as the asshole he was. And, you know, any, any sort of kindness or niceness she showed throughout this whole show was always sort of selfishness. I I never li I was never a fan of the character. Oh, listen, Amelia Clark Clark's a great actress. It was a fantastic character, but the character well, I don't never got why people liked her so much. She was never a good person. I always felt like she was so driven for the Iron Throne that she was no different really than than Cersei at times. When Jon started to win her over and she went to help them, I thought maybe that was her switching, you know. For showing that she is an actor. That I was wrong. She wasn't like that. But then when she started to act how she acted when Jon was taken aback by finding out he was a Targaryen. 
I mean, that was all, it was pretty clear to me. That was all selfish too. It was all because she loved him. It was all about her again. So, I mean, listen, I, I, I we did a stream. I did a, re- a random stream a couple of weeks ago after the first and second episode to test out Restream, where, which lets me stream at the same time to YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was talking about episode one and two. And then I was like, yeah, maybe I'll do one for episode three and four. I really wish I did one after episode three, but didn't get to watch it because things came up. So no big deal there, though. It was just a big battle scene. It was a th- I thought it was a great episode, episode three. I know some people didn't like it. Episode four, I didn't even want to talk about after because I thought it was really bad. I thought the first half was solid, but then that second half, to me, almost ruined the entire show. Period. It was just such a bad episode, and they just rushed everything in episode four. This, I like how they went back to just slow... Uh, well, other than Jamie fucking teleporting from Tyrion letting him go to all of a sudden being inside the walls of, of King's Landing. That was lame. A lot of teleporting in this season, hasn't there been? But um, I thought this episode was really good, and I think it might have saved everything that made me hate it in episode uh, four. Uh, let's go back to the chat here. I, I'm i a big fan of this episode. <laughs> Uh, Brett says uh, she literally spent her entire time on the show in a quest for power it's not that surprising right I mean but apparently it was for some people Elizabeth Warren what did she doing what did she do what did she do why did she do that I, I a couple you know I saw her she wrote this article for the cut a couple weeks ago about how she's a big fan of Game of Thrones, been watching the season, the the show from the very beginning, her favorite show on TV. She's a huge fan. She loves it, and she wrote she wrote um this this piece basically talking about why she likes Daenerys. It's her favorite character, and you know how Cersei's got gonna get what's coming to her. And a lot of people thought she was sort of alluding to the fact that she's Daenerys and and Trump is Cersei because I mean she's running for president. There's a reason she wrote this article. And <laughs> when I saw her, when I saw her tweet it out, I mean, share it out, publish it, I thought to myself, what are you doing? The show's not over yet. Have you, you, you're a fan of the show, don't you know where this could go? It was, listen, I don't think it's, it's, I mean, it's a show. I don't think her not seeing Daenerys coming, Daenerys being the Mad King coming. Uh, is disqualifying <laughs> for her run for president. But I do think that her being a fan of this show, seeing what this show does, uh, and then still writing an article before the show has come to an end, with that thinking, hey, this could this could not come out in my favor, my opinion of these characters, and me trying to allude to these characters being like people in real life, which, if they're not like those people in real life, will bite me in the ass. That might be disqualifying, in my opinion. <laughs> what is she? Well, why did she publish that, man? Why did she publish that? Ah, Elizabeth Warren, why? Why do that to yourself? Why? 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 Oh, man. Uh, Renee says, Daenerys read Bakunin. Uh... Sijak says, I liked it. Show is good. Series is great. Done. I think it's the best show on TV. And I think there's there's no other... And I don't know what's going to happen when this show ends. Because not many shows catch my attention like this show does. I'm not a big TV watcher, honestly. Um, I used to get excited for Walking Dead. But that show hasn't been great for seasons. I still watch it because I feel like I, I it's an obligation now. But this show... I think the reason I've been so hard on this show for the past two seasons, but especially this season, is that the show is still so good. So to see it just not as good as it is usually, but still better than everything else, I guess it's sort of disappointing. And that's why we're so hard on it. But it is, to me, the best, the best show on TV. I mean, it's so good. And even if it's not as great now, they've already built up those characters in the good seasons so well that you still have this 
attachment and care for them because they're, you know, what we know about them is so well done. Um, I want to talk about what I think is going to happen next episode, but let's keep going through this uh, stuff. Also, if you want to call in, I, I opened up the, 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 the Skype. If you go to Skype and go to Call Doomed, not expecting any call-ins for this. You know, I'm looking at the YouTube chat. This is just a fun live stream. Not even the usual number of people are watching. No biggie. But I'm having fun doing this because I'm having fun watching this show. <laughs> uh, let's see what else people are saying. Uh, Ryan says, hello, Matt and party people. I'm at work, so I haven't seen the episode yet, so I'll have to catch this tomorrow. Everyone have a good one, and as always, left is best. Right, Renee says, Peter Dinklage on the Antifada. Listen, the worst thing about this season to me, well, not the worst thing, but one of the worst things about this season is just how bad they've done Tyrion, man. Tyrion's better than this. He's so smart, and I get he's not going to be right all the time, which is why Jorah makes sense to say, you know, he learns from his mistakes. But he hasn't even done that. Oh, we got a call. Hold on, let's take this call. Uh, Renee, how you doing, buddy? How you doing, Renee? A lot of things might be wrong, but that doesn't mean that they are fascist. All right, Renee, how you doing, buddy? I'm only listen. I'm only talking Game of Thrones for this live stream. Wait a minute, I can listen to you. Wait a minute. All right, well, listen to the Skype, not to the. Okay. uh, All right. I'll sign off and listen to you in the. All right. I don't know what's going. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks for calling in, Renee. That went well. Uh, but anyway. Um, so what I was saying about Tyrion, if the whole thing was that he can learn from his mistakes, yet he still makes the same fucking mistake with his sister over and over again. He fell for her bullshit when they first went there to convince her to go north to fight the Night King. Fine. He thought maybe the Night King, regardless of everything he's seen from her, maybe the Night King, the worst baddie ever seen in Westeros, in the realm, can change her mind. That doesn't change your mind. If the Night King doesn't change your mind, that should be the lesson, as Jorah puts, he learns. That should have been the lesson Tyrion learns and goes, all right, fuck my sister. I tried. I tried to save her. If he wants to still save Jamie because he got this bond with Jamie from when he was a kid and Jamie basically helps him survive, I get that. And he owed Jamie from when Jamie did the same to him when Tyrion was going to be executed. I get the Tyr- I get the Jamie love. But the Cersei thing, he fucks up when he goes to the walks over to the wall in episode four, one of the worst Game of Thrones episodes ever, in my opinion, and tries to convince her then. Just and then he pulls this shit. Like Jamie's gonna change her mind now? I mean It was just he's he it's it's not it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Uh-uh. A mistake, if you ask me. A huge mistake, if you ask me. <laughs> um, all right, let's go back to the comments. Uh, if you're listening in Periscope or YouTube for the first time even, go to youtube.com slash and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I do a weekly stream. I would like to do more. I'm probably going to do more videos a week. But right now, there's definitely a weekly stream, usually interviews about the right and the left and internet culture and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Uh, And it's called Doomed because everything sucks. But I'll I'll get you through it in a a way that makes you think, you know, at the end that eh, everything may suck, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a chuckle at the end. Like Euron getting murdered by Jamie, yet still having the last laugh as he dies on a rock. Euron, the most disappointing character on the show, yet they gave him so much to do. Killed the dragon and the Kingslayer, yet he was nothing but a horny pirate. When in the book, he actually has all this magic he uses. Unbelievable. Easily could have wrote that in. Would have made a lot of sense how he could kill a dragon, you know? <sighs> uh, over on the YouTube comments, we got... Uh, where's my uh, Periscope comments? All right, here we go. We got some Periscope comments, too. And we got Facebook comments. Cool, cool. Let's keep it going here. Um, 
problem. All right, Brett, probably best you don't hang around then, Ryan Tennant. It's about to get spoily as fuck in here, right, right? Ryan, I think Ryan left already. Sijax, Jon Snow really does know nothing, yet again surprised when power corrupts. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I feel bad for Jon. I like him as a character because I think he's... I think I would be John in that world because I'm stupid like that. I fall for people's shit because I want to give people a a chance. Like unless someone was clearly, obviously, a right-wing grifter, which I'm good at. (laughs) I'm good at pointing out. Like I would have probably called off a grifter like a fucking little finger. But I would have probably fallen for Daenerys' charm because I would have thought, oh, I feel bad for her because of her her upbringing. That would have been my demise too, I think. Um, so I, I like John and I think he's inherently, uh, wants to do good, but he really does know nothing. You're right. He fucks up so much. I, I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about what's going to happen going forward in a little bit. Uh, Renee says more like absolute lack of control. Uh, buy attack says your Danny icon is priceless. Yes. If you go to YouTube, the thumbnail is a screen uh, uh, cap I found online of a clip of Amelia Clark as Daenerys uh, in an outtake doing this crazy laugh because it just fits for this episode, right? Um, By attack continues. Honestly, although honestly, her burning thousands of civilians came out of nowhere and the setup was really bad. I'll tell you this. If you watch this episode tonight, when they did the previously on Game of Thrones... They did this really good thing that I could not believe they were just throwing in the recap because it should have been in the episode. They show her watching Masande getting beheaded. That shot where she looks and she gets angry and you see tears in her eyes out of her anger. But then they have all these voices going in her head throughout the entire series, but on the recap. They they, They had all the way back to like, Lady Oleana, I think if I can't if I can't remember some people's names at this point. There's so many people uh, uh, from the High Garden, uh, the the awesome old lady who kills uh, 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 Joffrey, poisons Joffrey. She hears her saying, "You're a dragon, be a dragon." She hears words that her brother said all the way back in season one. She's got all the different things people have been saying to her from from Jorah, uh, uh, Tyrion, Varys. Uh, uh, anyone who's ever said anything that shaped her. Missande saying Dracaris. And it's just clearly her going crazy at this point. And they put it in the fucking recap that should have been in the episode. You're absolutely right. And if you watch a lot of times, I've watched every after the show. That's why I didn't start right away because I watched the after show. You know, listen, you're not going to get all the subtle things. I get the, all the subtle things. I get it. And so in these behind-the-scenes things, having the director and the show creators tell you about these little things you might not pick up on is helpful. It's good. It adds a lot. But they can't do that for major plot points. And I'm sorry. Sometimes, if there's anything I learned watching TV, especially from pro wrestling, is that people need... The average TV watcher needs shit spelled out for them. And I'm not saying that to be an asshole. I didn't pick up a lot of things. I'm just saying literally... People need to be told things sometimes straight up. And and you could do it in interesting ways. It doesn't have to always be, hey, this happened and this happened, or I'm getting angry. But, you know, that's sort of why I think that 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 part in the previously on Game of Thrones was so good. It should have been in an episode. If you ask me if that is how episode four ended, I think I would have had a different feeling about episode four as a whole. And I feel like they didn't put that in episode four because they felt like it would have given away too much for episode five. I get it. But at this point, fuck it. I mean, she needed to, that needed to be in an episode. Uh, Oxy says, someone got a haircut. Right, I'm sort of disappointed that it's getting that my haircut. That if you watch the weekly Doomed podcast slash YouTube live stream since February... It's been an ongoing thing where I lost a bet about Beto O'Rourke's 24-hour haul, donation haul. And I was supposed to get a haircut. I had very long hair if you're tuning in for the first time. 
And I had been promising I was going to get one. And I got one just this past weekend. And I didn't want to spoil it. I wanted to show it on the episode where all the regular Doomed listeners are watching so they could finally see. So I thought I'd wear it. I had my hood up. Cause, and also I have the hood up because it's cold in my house actually right now. But um, oh well. Thank you. I got a haircut. Yes. Brett says, John is slow to learn, but he learns. He's like Sansa that way, I guess. Right, right, right. Renee says, but KL was full of Brexiters and tea partiers. No, those people would have given. No, they had no love for, for Cersei. Uh, Dakota says on Periscope, cute haircut, Matt. Why, thank you. Uh, on Facebook, Zach. Ah, Zach. I went to college with Zach. If this is the same Zach I'm thinking it is. The nearest went full tanky. <laughs> Rubik's. Uh, Danny finally went full Mad Queen. It's been coming. Right, right. It's not a surprise. Uh, Kim says, long live the Dragon Queen. Nah, I'm not a fan of Daenerys. I don't like killing innocents, man. The, those people in King's Landing did not deserve that. I'm sorry. No. Uh, Renee. But Tulsi Targaryen wants the best for us. Rubik says, till next week, she's dead. Bend the knee. I don't know, man. This show... Listen, having Arya there and the way they had her there and everything she saw gave a lot of foreshadowing. But this show is good at subverting a lot of that stuff. But also at the same time, this show is good at giving... Listen, I still wish the Night King would have rolled through Winterfell. I'm sorry. I really liked that episode. I didn't like it as much as I did the first time I watched it, but then I rewatched it like half a dozen times. And you should too if you haven't rewatched the the Long Night. And knowing what's going to happen watching that episode, it's actually a lot better and it's really good. The disappointment of not having what you hoped happen is out the window. So when you see what happened and how it happened, I think is really good. And I have no problem with Arya killing the Night King. I think it works. Um, and I mean, uh, Melisande, Melisandre, excuse me, Melisandre, I'm combining Masande's voice and, uh, Masande's name and Melisandre's name. Uh, but Melisande, uh, the Red Witch, um, she said it, what, season three or four was it? When she meets Arya, when Arya's with the Brotherhood. And by the way, I miss Beric Dondarrion so much. My favorite character in the whole show, by the way, Beric. Badass. Um, after Oberyn him and Oberyn my two faves uh, and I love the fact that the mountain is still dead and the way the mountain is because of Oberyn all the way back in what season 4 it was right um, but anyway I mean she gave us the brown eyes the green eyes the blue eyes I mean it was a, it was a hint I thought I, I didn't think of it then I didn't think she was going to do that I thought she would have a role to play killing the, all of them and also, I think they could have done it in a way... Again, they pulled it off that way to give you the surprise of Arya. But I think it would have been so much cooler if... What I was hoping would happen when I saw they went that route was... Um, uh, Theon stands in front of... And this is fan fiction now, but Theon stands in front of Bran as... The whites are already surrounding them and the Night King and his white walkers are, are, are walking up. And Night King walks over to fight Theon, kills him right away. But as that has happened, Arya, Beric, and the Hound pull through and start f- fighting with um, uh, the whites. And that's how Arya gets in that place. Beric gets killed by the whites. The Hound somehow just survives you know, I, I thought that would have been pretty cool. And it would have made a lot more sense than just having Arya appear out of nowhere. Um, or Beric and the Hound could have distracted them, killing Beric. Which, again, would have given Beric the reason to live as Arya pulls off the sneak attack on the Night King. Uh, again, this is just fan fiction. Would have made it a hell of a lot better, in my opinion. But, uh... I, you know... So in where what was I even saying? Oh yeah, so I had wished that the Night King would have rolled through. It doesn't mean Daenerys and Jon Snow and Sansa and Arya and Hound had to die. 
they could have retreated, gone back to uh, uh, Dragon having a mental block right now, whatever it was called. Uh, and that could have played out that way. But it is what it is. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Thomas says, uh, uh, it's going to be the mad mod. Uh, what? Uh, uh, Renee says, uh, Missande tempered her as Sir Jorah. Right, and I think they should have played that up a little bit more. Listen, Grey Worm, Missande, and Jorah were her confidants. Those were the three that were closest to her. Everyone else was new to her. And so she didn't have the trust she had in them, even though she knew they were necessary to get her to where she wanted to go. Uh, speaking of Varys, Jon Snow, and Tyrion. And she never had that connection with Grey Worm where she could talk to him. She just trusted him to fight for her. So I get she's got no one to talk to with Jorah and Missandei gone. Her two, no one in the world she trusts more. And they really should have played that up more. I don't think they did it enough. I'm sorry. Uh... Uh, by attack said she had already won the throne by the time the bells rang, so her burning a thousands of people was pointless. Right, right. I mean, that's the point, right? I also think it was a bit out of character for Cersei to ring the bell. I thought Jamie was headed to there to ring the bell himself, like just, and she was going to be wondering why the bell rang, and she would have gone to see, and she would have. That's how she would have found Jamie. Uh, that's my problem with that. Cersei would have never done that. Even to the very end, she wouldn't have. It would have taken Daenerys to do what she was doing after the bell to change Cersei's mind. But at that point, Cersei wouldn't have rang the bell. Uh, Rubik says she still was crazy when she knew it wasn't hers to claim, right? Well, if you watch the show, the after show, um. Oh, right, right. You're talking about when she found out about John being a Targaryen. Right, right, right. I mean, that always bothered me. To, well, not bothered me because it makes sense in the storyline, but that was a super big tell to me too. Uh, season uh, episode two of the season, when John tells her, and her first worry was he had that better claim to the throne. I mean, that to me is a huge uh, problem. It should have been to everyone. I mean, not to everyone because they weren't, didn't see it, but to John, he should have seen it at that point. Uh, T-Money says, is Danny the green eyes Melisandre was talking about to Arya? I mean, everyone thought it was going to be Cersei, but it's looking like it's going to be Daenerys, right? But also, who knows if Sansa's going to be successful doing it? I mean, listen, we've already seen that prophecies on this show are, are bunk and full of shit, Right? Uh, who is the prince that was promised? Everyone thought it was going to be John for killing the Night King. And that was words from the Red Woman, Melisandre, who doesn't care a shit as a woman from Essos about the Iron Throne. She's not part of the Seven Kingdoms. So the prince that was promised was going to save the realm from the Night King. Lord of Light was there to fight the Night King. Unless, who knows at this point, what we're going to see in the last episode. So to me, that prophecy right now, from what we know, is out the window. And then the other prophecy that, what was it, that witch or something told a young Cersei was that she was going to be backstabbed by her brother or something? That didn't happen. I thought Jamie at the end, was going to kill her. Like a mercy slang. He's the king slayer. And it would have made that prophecy come true. He would have died too along with her. But I thought he was going to spare her from the torture and the suffering. That didn't happen either. So. I don't know what, what they're planning with that. Uh, Renee says King's Landing full of alt Reich Brexiters and tea partiers. Uh, Brett says she wanted to burn the city down out of spite. That's why the surrender didn't stop her. If you watch, if you watch the end of, if you watch the behind the scenes after the show, 
they say that that shot of her on the dragon after while the bells are ringing, it's her feeling empty. Like everything she ever wanted just came true and it wasn't enough. She didn't get that feeling that she thought she was going to have from winning. So she enacted more pain and suffering and revenge pretty much. Uh, Renee says Winter. Uh, all right, still going on with Winterfell being alt right and KKK nativists. Rubix, Danny's burnt people every season, right? Oxy says I think this episode is really good because I was super right back in 2016. <laughs> Matt, no, I really like this episode. I thought it was really good, and I liked it way before everyone started retweeting that tweet. I thought it was a good episode. I thought the Long Night was a good episode. I thought episodes one and two this season were good episodes. Episode four ruined it for me. But I think this season, this episode might have bring it, bring it back a bit from the brink. I don't know what Renee is saying. Renee just said Dracaris, Laura Loomer. No idea what Renee is talking about. Uh, Rubik's on Periscope. This was a perfect way to end the fight for the throne. Uh, Renee says Doom Patrol. Biotech. I don't know. She didn't need to burn thousands of people. Nothing she did in the show before that alluded she'd kill thousands of innocent people in order to get the, th- the throne. The show writer's ham-fisted Mad Queen plot. Well, she did kill all the slavers in Essos way after that was all... And she did kill uh, the Tarleys. After they already, I mean... They didn't bend the knee, but the, the, the fight with the war was over. And she showed no remorse to Samwell Tarly after everything Sam's done for her, saving Jorah. And quite frankly, saving a lot more people by sending Sam's the reason they knew about Dragonstone. Dragonglass, excuse me. Biotech said, if you read the books, you'd understand how ridiculous what she did was. The books the show was based on. I honestly think, Biotech, that if you think the, the books are going a different route in this, with this storyline, I think you're going to be wrong. This is definitely, I mean, they say that George Martin told them the major storylines that he knew he's going to get to when he finishes those books. Without a doubt, this has got to be one of those major storylines. This is huge. I don't think they took liberties with this one. I think this is what George Martin told them he was going to do with Daenerys. Maybe he'll build up a bit more in the book so it's not such a left field move that you think it was. But this is what's happening. I'm pretty sure. This isn't... I I really don't think this is something that he didn't tell them that he was going to do. Marwin on Facebook says, LOL, Elizabeth Warren is clumsy and out of touch but wants so desperately not to be. I really like Liz Warren and she's not... <laughs> from the Native American thing to to, 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 to... to... I hate to even put this up there with that. <laughs> this is just... She should have waited to the end of the show. She's been a fan since the beginning. It's like watching... It's honestly like watching... Episode see, every season every episode of season one, up before Ned Stark gets behead. Well, no, that doesn't count because no one knew that was gonna happen. So it's like literally, uh, I don't even know what to compare it to. I guess the Red Wedding. If she wrote up, if she wrote like why Rob is going to happily get married or something, like at this point you knew. I mean, maybe people didn't know the Red Wedding was going to happen, but you knew it wasn't going to end good. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe we're Monday, what is it? Monday morning quarterbacking or whatever. Uh, D. Mobbins on Periscope says, fuck this show, LOL, just playing, just playing. Ed, Edward Norton on YouTube, have you seen Westworld? I have. I think it's a good show. I don't think it's as good as this show, but I think it's a really good show. Tom says she was a tyrant who roasted people and always had to be talked out of mass murder. Right. 
Brett says Daenerys has been murdering for a while now. She just stepped it up. Um, someone else on YouTube whose name I can't read. Uh, finally, King's Landing is burned. I've been waiting this moment since executing Ned Stark, where the people were watching and clapping. Now go to hell. I mean, what do you expect from the people? They were told Ned Stark was a traitor. They don't know all the behind the scenes. They didn't know that Joffrey wasn't actually Rob's son and uh, King Robert's son and the rightful heir to the throne. Biotech says, who's she murdering? Slave masters? Oh, no. Well, right, though, but the point is that she's supposed to be just. So after killing the ones that betrayed her because she had to or whatever, she could have imprisoned the others. I mean, mass murder, death sentence, I mean, that's the whole point in the real world, right? We're not supposed to be for, good people aren't supposed to be for executing people, right? The death penalty is bad, right? I mean, that's, as a progressive, that's what I believe, right? I mean, that's what you should believe too if you're, I mean, maybe you're not. Again, this is not an episode of Doomed where I'm talking to my usual, uh, but I mean, she's... But if she's a good person, she shouldn't be putting people to death, right? Uh, Marwin on Facebook. Is Varys a dem socialist in a feudal world? I actually said that uh, uh, Varys, after this episode, is Bernie 2016. If, per my tweet, everyone was calling Hillary Daenerys. Because he tried to warn us, man. And she didn't win, but she ended up... She lost to Trump... Which, if we're going by this ridiculousness of comparing to Game of Thrones, he's the one doing all the burning down everything, right? Burn them all. Because Hillary lost to him. But yeah, when Varys... Actually, when Varys said in that last episode... the Var Episode 4 was good for the Varys Tyrion stuff. When Varys said that his loyalty is to the people, and, he's, and, and, and Tyrion says... Regular people don't care about his, who sits on the throne. And Varys stood up and said, it matters who sits on the throne, even if they don't care, because who sits on the throne affects their everyday life, and I want to make sure they can live good lives and feed their children. I was like, holy shit, is that so... That's fucking prescient, right? That's... That's like now, right? That's like real people. That's like... Um, and alludes to what's going on in the real world, right? I mean, most people don't pay attention to politics like I do and like we do if you're a regular watcher of the show. But who, who, who's in power affects everybody, whether they give a shit or not. Uh, Brett, that's true. Tyrion's been dumbed down a bit. Oh, yeah, it's been... Biotech said she never went on a murder spree and she'd obviously won by that point. It's bad writing, I'm sorry. Alright, I guess. Renee says, anyone catch that reference? Not sure what you're talking about, Renee. Uh, the monster says, is Cersei dead? I don't know, actually. I mean, I, it seems like she's dead. Pretty sure she is. But man, is that a disappointing death for Cersei then, right? Uh, Anna Gao on uh, The Monster also said Cool Dragon Brett says This is going to be A divisive episode I loved it I really liked it too uh, uh, Anna Gao On Periscope He's a Lannister Blinded by family loyalty Right But in many ways He wasn't a Lannister Right So The family loyalty th Loyalty thing Could have been for For Jamie, And I would have got that But for Cersei I mean we've already seen He's got no problem Killing his dad Uh, Renee says, uh, "Token better than Alan Moore. Better than uh, uh, Token better. Uh, Token greater than Alan Moore. Greater than Terry Pratchett. Greater than George R. R. Martin. Greater than HBO. Greater than DNC. Okay, buddy." Um, uh, Brian says, "Euron didn't deserve the glory." I mean, if we want to talk about. Badly written characters from the very beginning. Man, Euron sucks, right? And they gave him so much to do. He killed a uh, uh, dragon, Rhaegar. He killed Jamie, pretty much. 
I mean men. Uh, Brett says, yeah, Token Lore is top tier. Ed says, I'll defend Danny. She had every right to do what she had to do. But she didn't have to do that anymore. That's the point. They'd given up. And even if she wanted to kill Cersei, she could have done that without killing all those innocents. Uh, Renee says, George R.R. is such a hack. Brian says, yeah, I get you, Renee. Sijax, the Jamie thing worked for me because I was the ugly kid who no one liked except my older bro growing up. Uh, Renee says, Matt Shapiro, what are you talking about? Uh, Renee says, all dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes. Right, and that's why he hated his father in the end. But Cersei looked at him the same way too, pretty much. Sijax says, I don't think Tyrion's been dumbed down. I legit think he's lost his mojo after killing his dad. But if he's lost his mojo since killing his dad, that means Daenerys has always had a shitty Tyrion. But we've seen that's not really the case, right? Uh, JJM Hicks says, Matt, I'm going to have to disagree with you here. That would be a very hacky way to convey what Danny is thinking. It should have been conveyed through Danny's face. Yeah, but people just need it spelled out for them, man. The previously on was so good, I thought. Uh, Trix says, Do you think Jon Snow could be burned by fire since he's a Targaryen? Well, George Martin has already said that Targaryens aren't fireproof. Daenerys has just been able to do that. Um, and people pointed out that if he is fireproof, then technically he shouldn't have been scared about Assyrian's fire when he was the zombie dragon, but then again, who knows what zombie dragon fire is like, but I don't know. Uh, El Chingo on uh, Periscope says, Key Master of Zarkon Forest. No idea what you're talking about. Uh, Renee says, like, um, acting to J.J.M. Hicks about Daenerys. Uh, El Chingo says, you feel the cave of Zarzu Duba? I don't know what you're talking about. If it's another show then, or, or, or pop culture reference, then I'm lame and don't know. Um, Brian says, yeah, to, about the um, John being fireproof. I thought they would dealt with that at Winterfell with the Undead Dragon, right? But they didn't. Uh, El Chingo says, what was lost? What will be lost first, the Zangzar crystal or your virginity? Well, I, I'll give you a hint about that one. I, I just look into my... Uh, I, 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 I don't even know what the Zangzar crystal is. Maybe neither. Who knows? Brett, Varys clearly had the better points when he had that treasonous chat with Tyrion. Tyrion is still taking chances with his decisions, but also operating out of fear. Right. Renee says Spock Binder. What? That don't look like Spock. Uh, Trick says, what if Danny sentences John and John accepts it, but the dragon doesn't kill him with the fire, letting everyone know he's a Targaryen? Maybe. Renee says, yeah, like no one compelled to follow Trump on MAGA landing. Brian says, Danny is the only person formidable enough to handle the Iron Throne. It's one thing to uncage the tiger. It's another to ride it. El Chingo, will you find the secret of Alsteron Forest or the persons that find you interesting for it? No idea what you're talking about. Uh, Alo Vara says, you a budget David Blaine wannabe or something? What's going on on Periscope, man? Uh, Renee says, uh, Night King should have outflanked through King's Landing. Trick says, uh, it's one thing to be killed in battle, then brought back to life to fight again. Jon Snow is clearly the better ruler. Uh, Vadim Stream says, Hot Pie will totally take the throne. <laughs> uh, El Chingo, the sword of Lord Bordelman or your mom? Uh, probably my mom. I don't know. What do you think? Um, 
Where am I in the chat now? Um, Renee says, Undead Dead. Brett says, Tempering expectations is always good. Overhype leads to disappointment. We all know this, right? Renee says, Bran sold Theon out. Sorry, not sorry. I will get to that before I end the stream. Uh, El Chingo says, Can you escape the Dragon Lord of Cardiffias or your mom's basement first? I've escaped, I've, I've been out of my mom's basement for about a decade. Uh, and honestly, unfortunately, I never had a basement, which I did. Live in New York, lived in apartments my whole life, don't have a basement. Uh, Vadim says, Arya could be pregnant with Ge from Gendry, and because she was touched, she could give birth to a white baby. Oh, uh, that. That would be ridiculous. Don't like that. I'll get to what I hope happens in a minute. All right, Trix. Personally, I think they did a good job. The way that Arya killed Night King was anticlimactic, though. I, I look at it this way. Night King and the Whites have been very weary of Jon Snow since they saw him kill one of them. It affected them, obviously. They saw, holy shit. It's the first time they saw one of them get killed. I don't think they wanted to face John. I think being who they were and knowing the Night King being smart, obviously, probably one of the smartest people in the show, actually. I think he was aware that there was some sort of chosen one or something like that. And that was a possibility that John was the one. And he didn't want to face John. He didn't care to face John. His point wasn't to fight John. He had a goal to take out Bran. So I was fine with that. I think his the 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 White Walkers, his his like commanders or whatever, they should have been in battle for sure. That bothered me that we didn't see that, which is why I gave that scenario where the Hound and Beric gave their lives to distract for Arya. And they could have fought them. But we didn't get that either. Vadim says, I doubt that'll happen, but perhaps talking about his Arya Gendry scenario. Renee says, Night King should have built up his army with the south and then attack Winterfell. Better writing. Well, he would have to go through Winterfell to get to the south. Sijak says, I'm glad the Night King wasn't such a big deal. It would have been shitty to have uh, the Dune Mount be, I don't know, I'm sorry if I'm, I, I'm not as smart to read that word. Been a bunch of lame ass zombie slaying. This isn't Walking Dead. This is motherfucking Game of Thrones. Right, but a lot of people saw it as this. The show started with the White Walkers. And a lot of people saw this as while they're playing politics, there's an actual disaster akin to what people saw as like modern day climate change. I get it. And it would have been, I thought it would have been well done and not what other shows would have done. It would have been like, it would have been truly a Game of Thrones route to go, right? I mean, no other show would have done that. I, I, I get it. I get it, I do. Why people were upset that. I, I thought the Night King should have won. Cody said, just got here. Well, welcome, Cody. El Chingo, Game of Thrones is cool, yeah? Renee, well, Amelia Clark is no Vivian Lay. Uh, El Chingo, do you let the runaway you kidnapped out of that door in the background? It's a closet. It's filled with coats. Renee says, very Prometheus uh, to Vadim. Cody, Danny has always been a mad queen since the very beginning and always talking about burning cities to the ground without considering civilian casualties and always needing advisors to control herself. Right. Right. And they alluded to it a lot. Brian, Danny to a pile of ashes. Bend the knee. Right. Uh, Sijax. I was under the impression Jamie rang the bell or at least random civilians. It was unclear who actually rung it. Well, everyone was yelling for the queen to make the call and Cersei never makes that call. Visibly. 
So that made me assume that when she heard the bell, she would show some sort of disgust that it was rung. But she doesn't. She just cries. Tears fall out of her eyes. Like, she did make the call. Like, she can't believe she just forfeited. Uh, Pernician says, I was expecting Jamie to kill Cersei, too. Right, I, I thought that. Maestro VIP says, Bran will warg into Cersei and sit on the throne. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I do have a... I do have a guess, and I'll tell you at the end again. Sijax, uh, uh Oh, wait, sorry, that was just a vidim. Uh, Cody, if you know anything about Game of Thrones, just understand that prophecy is always messy and isn't interpreted in the right way, for example. What Missandre, 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 uh, Melisandre thought Stannis was the Lord of Light. Right, but the thing is that the Lord of Light was correct that there was someone to save them. Because... He brings back Beric to do something for the greater good, which is to save Arya, who was the one to save everybody. The thing wasn't that prophecies weren't true. The thing was that mortals misunderstand them. Melisandre was right. She just picked the wrong person. She misread the prophecy. That's how I read it, at least. I mean, she came and she saved everybody. From the Dothraki fire, which gave them... I know everyone thinks the Dothraki got slayed and murdered, but we see that that's not really what happened. A lot of Dothraki did survive. And it gave everyone a bit... It gave everyone, like, hope in the beginning to fight. And then she comes out and pulls through with the, the fire trenches, which clearly gives them an advantage at first. Even... In the end, when they, the, the, the White Walkers are, are running through, the, the, the dead are running through, they're still running through certain areas, so it's not just full-blown everyone coming in at once. So it definitely helps them fight them off. If, you're, you know, if you really want to explain how a few of these guys were able to fight off all these fucking undead people. And then she gives Arya the words Arya needs to save everybody. Uh, Cody says, without advisors, Danny's a psychopath. Renee, yeah, she could have sent the Tarleys back to Cersei. Brandon on Facebook. So is the Iron Throne under the rubble? So what do you think Varys was reading? What do you mean what was Varys reading? Varys was writing something. He was writing... Varys was writing to send out word that Jon Snow was the rightful heir to the throne. Uh, Sijax, the prophecy was fulfilled. Tyrion led her to her death by getting Jaime to try to lead her to the dinghy. But Jaime didn't have to lead her there for her to die. She was dead no matter what at that point. Jaime was her only route out. And just because that route was closed doesn't mean if she stayed in the Red Keep, she would have been dead. So I, 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 don't, I don't read that as that, you know? Eric says the show is always bad. Try Mad Men and The Sopranos. I really liked Game of Thrones. I'm sorry. I thought it was a great show. And when they did fuck up, it was still light years better than a lot of shows. Adam Ultraberg says Bells and Sebastian. Don't know what you're talking about. Renee, HBO ruined Mad Men too. I haven't watched Mad Men, so I can't. Uh, M Michael says uh, the show is sprinkled hints throughout the entire series, right? Renee says it's like the dragon won the election. Tommy on Facebook, she is dead. Uh, he didn't kill Jamie. I mean, Jamie was dead. So I think Euron did kill Jamie, even though Jamie was going to die from those, those wounds. He fucking was bleeding out. He was going to die. Uh, Renee says, yeah, today I'm not filling the chat back to Ableton. Well, Renee, I told you, this is a Game of Thrones chat. It's not the usual Doom and Politics chat. We're just having some fun tonight. This isn't the the, the podcast. Buddy. I regret not doing these for all of the episodes, though. This is fun.
uh, Ni uh, or N333. John is going to kill Daenerys. Bran is going to be the new king. Bran. Well, we'll talk about that. And then we'll, we'll jump. Brett, I know one guy that was always a big fan of Euron, and that guy is kind of a dick. The pieces fit. <laughs> Brian, they should have added a flashback to Missandei's, uh head falling off. Then Danny snaps. Right? Well, that's not the only thing that caused it to snap, though. Birdman, what the fuck? Danny didn't hear the bells? Must have been high in Starbucks. On Facebook, Brandon with a question mark. I'm not sure why. JJM Hicks on YouTube. Not Spockbinder, Sithbinder. But who is the other? Rule of two. Oh, right, because my... Oh, okay, I like that. Vadim. Oh, hey, Sijax. Didn't see your message till now. Vadim. I think there was more time they could bring the Whites back somehow. Like, there's an ancient pact that requires them to be around and somehow someone would be sacrificed to be a White, but not. Enough time to do it. Uh, Brett, I can see that, Matt. It did start with walkers. Then they were put on the back burner. No one dealt with them, and they became a giant problem. Ed says, uh, Danny is sending a cold message to everyone. Uh, to anyone who crosses her. Uh, XGFX on Periscope. What if Game of Thrones is real? Brett says, more like a hot message. Brian, the Danny, Jamie, and Cersei turn seems unearthed to me. I kind of hope Cersei would have won to make sure no one got the ending they wanted. Yeah, but I felt like they built up that the Unsullied and Dothraki and the dragons were too much, and it would have been the Golden Company. I wish they would have given a little bit more to them, like a little bit more of a fight, but the fact that they just got murdered was fine too because we didn't. they were not proven. No one knew. You know what I mean? Ed says Cersei depended too much on her scorpions. Right. Well, they worked. Uh, Brett, LOL, just maximum disappointment. Uh, Red Phil, this episode was the best ever. I really like this episode. I will say this, though. Of all the battles in this show, the best is still... The Long Night's fantastic. But the best battle, just for how it was done. It's probably the most realistic battle scene I've ever seen in my life. The fa- Aside from the fact that there's a giant in it. <laughs> but the Battle of the Bastards was just Amazing. It was just so well done. And the pileup of the dead bodies is just really well done. Uh, Brandon on Facebook. He already knew that Daenerys knew. Why would he burn his own note and take off his jewelry knowing he was about to die? He was protecting whomever wrote to him. I don't know if he was reading or finishing it. Yeah, but they already... They already um, showed that he was being careful when he was writing in the first one, right? But you could be right. You could be right, though. I'll have to rewatch and get back to you. I will rewatch. I rewatch these episodes a lot. <laughs> my, uh, my girlfriend, it's her favorite show. She loves it. She's the one who got me into Game of Thrones. She watches the episodes over and over again. She really likes pulling this new stuff out of it. She's called a lot of this stuff before me, obviously. <laughs> Uh, Brian says, the thing I don't like about that, though, with Varys, Varys is supposed to know how he was going to die. So, maybe that's why he knew when he took off his jewelry, like you said. But then why be with Daenerys to begin with, knowing she's going to be the one to kill you? Because remember, a red woman in Essos tells Varys, warns Varys, that you know, you saw in the fire how your demise comes. Uh, Brian says, hell yeah, if they're going to fuck it up, might as well do it good and proper. Brandon, perhaps a setup with Dorn, the Northmen, Yara, Sansa. But the Northmen were right there, pillaging and, and killing the innocents against what John wanted in King's Landing. And listen, if they, I, I think they need to somehow bring Dorn in just a little bit. But if Dorn somehow, somehow has a major role in this last episode, that would be some bullshit. Vadim says, Clegane Bowl, or however the hell you spell it, delivered. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Brandon says, who will John's final sword fight be with? I don't know. We'll even get one. Outlaw Jody on YouTube was really hoping for the Hound to survive and live out, live out his days in peace. But you have to understand, he did live out in peace. 
this is how I look at it. Because my, my girlfriend spoke to me about how she's her favorite character is the Hound. Um, and she wanted to see the Hound live. And she felt like seeing her him with Sansa and Arya proved he was a changed person and could live out happy. And I read it as no. And he saw how he was a changed person because of how Arya and Sansa looked at him. And he knew he was a good person now. But much like how Daenerys wasn't fulfilled in just winning at, at the end there. And then she decided to burn everything down. Like fucking Seth Rollins, burn it down. I look at it as the Hound realized he could never be happy as just being even a good person. Because the only thing that would bring him happiness, as he said a hundred million times, was taking out his brother. So him falling after killing his brother, I feel like that was him becoming happy. That was his final wish, and he got it. Uh, Brandon, the realm is what he fears for him, for not himself. Vadim, also this goes back a bit, but I had an argument with a friend today who thinks Littlefinger's death was unearned. He didn't die in a manner that was fitting to his character. Thoughts? Oh, definitely. He was, listen, for being such a witty person and, and pulling the strings all throughout, the fact he ended up in the north with Sansa, it made no sense. It was as far as possible from the throne at that point. I'm sort of getting tired now, so we could definitely talk about this more later. Uh, Vadim says, I was satisfied with it. Thought it was a classic case of hubris. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I was fine with it too, rewatching it, but him just being in the North made no sense. Being the master manipulator, ending up getting himself as far from the throne as possible. Brian, the Hound rules, never compromised, played it his own way. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to close up the stream now, but let me leave it with my predictions for next week. This is what I think. This is what I hope. Well, not predictions. I don't want to do predictions because I don't know. But this is what I hope happens. we got to go back to Winterfell. We have to find out Sansa's reaction from knowing. Arya's obviously going to play a role. Whether she actually kills Daenerys or not, I don't know. She'll go, she's going to try to do something, though. Maybe get to Jon, explain to him. I don't know. Maybe she kills a Grey Worm and uses his face. Possible. Bran has got to play a major role. If Bran does not play a major role, this whole thing is bullshit. I'm most disappointed, and we'll get to that more after I make sure it didn't happen, but right now I'm really pissed we haven't seen, seen Mira and, Hal, and the Hallands. The only person who knows, other than Ned, who knew of uh, who was there to see uh, uh, Jon Snow and know who Jon Snow was when he was a baby. But we'll talk about that more next week. So this is what I want to see happen, and we'll leave you there. Bran has got to have played some sort of role in all this. I always thought, what I always thought was, we know from the Hodor thing that if Bran puts himself somewhere, and something's happening in real life. It will affect the past, even though the past is always what's supposed to happen. Confusing, but that's how it works. What I always wanted was... Bran sees the Mad King doing the burn them all thing. And that's what affects somebody. In this case, Daenerys. If it makes her go crazy, maybe. And I would like for Bran to end up being someone bad. I like the idea that the Night King wasn't going to kill Bran. I really like that. I think Bran needs to play a big role. Brian says, great chat, Matt. Let's hope they stick the landing next week. And Vadim with the final comments. A lot of people say that th that will be the final shot. Uh, oh, uh, oh wait, well, sorry, I missed that. Vadim says, do you think it will end with Sam writing it all down? A lot of people think that will be the final shot. And uh, Vadim says, and he's the character that George R. R. Martin says is basically him. I thought that for a long time. And I always have said that 
without a doubt, uh, George R. R. Martin looks at him as, uh, looks at Sam as himself. And I always thought it would end with Sam writing the book, Game of Thrones. But after we heard from Sam's own view about books and history, when they were strategizing as the Night King was on his way, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Because Samuel basically says that all these books don't matter without our memories. So it shot that all in the foot. It just, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I did always think that was going to happen until that episode. PSJ, I think to my uh, hope for the last episode, said beautiful. Brett says props on that thumbnail. She looks pretty mad. Right, right. Thank you. Champagne Communist says, good evening, Legion of Doom. PSJ in Periscope says, I am in Japan. Well, thank you for joining us, PSJ. Vadim says, fun hangout. See you on CC chat. Yes, please get in touch with me, Vadim. We really got to set this up. And you know what? Let's do it with everyone you said, Michael, uh, Hassan. But fuck it. I will do it with just you if you want. Let's do more than one. Uh, All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Game of Thrones. Hope you enjoyed this talk afterwards. Uh, I'm going to try to do this for the last episode. I really regret not doing this throughout. This was really a lot of fun. Should have been doing this from the beginning when I started watching Game of Thrones. Uh, All right, guys. Take care. Have a good night. And uh, the night is dark and full of terror. Oh, one more time. The Lord of Light has to play another role. That can't be the last we saw of him. Something's got to happen with all that. And with that, though, I'll leave you all uh, goodbye. Uh, What's some of the things people say farewell with on the show? Stand together. Uh, And uh, whatever. The the night is dark. What is it? The night is dark and full of terror? Right. All right. I'm tired. Good night, everybody.